It's the last Saturday in August, and we are now ready to build the house. First day of framing, and we're laying down now the uh, base plates all around, anchoring them into the foundation. Notice the, uh, the screws protruding. Line up the walls and then screw them down. Thank God for nail guns. Do the walls on one side and then the other side. Far superior to the old fashioned job of kind of toe nailing them in. So, stretch, shot in, put it up. And John Mitchell and uh, Andy Barlow are working with another gentleman lining up uh, the marks on the plate for drilling the screw holes. John Battalami uh, arming the nail gun. We're going to actually drive the nails into the cement. So each one has a single uh, shell, and we restrict the use of that to people who are more trained. One wall is up, and another is almost ready to be raised. It is quite a teamwork effort. John Bertolomi on the right is the person who got the building permits for the houses. And he is the key person to ask when you had a question. Okay, we're erecting the wall. We're going to lift it up, put it on the, on the base plate, fit it over the screw holes, and then we'll line it up against the, the other wall, make sure it's plumb. Make sure one end is done right first, and then and add another section of the wall. Meanwhile, somebody else is working over in the garage, so the group is moving along very, very well. Let the young guys climb up on the top of things. The old people can we keep our feet on the ground. Making sure it's plumb. And then we further stabilize the uh, the walls by uh, putting up the plywood. Drilling the holes so it'll fit on those uh, base pins. Everybody's got a, a job and it's moving along very quickly. This, this house was framed very quickly. The drill holes are made big enough to have some leeway when making the base plates fit. A little tapping, and we have a nice snug fit. We will come back to this garage wall in a moment. A fellow across the street was uh, encouraged by our activity, so he started repairing his uh, porch. Another wall. We'll have this house done by this afternoon. Not really. Sometimes the base plates don't quite fit, even with careful measurements. They decided to put the new wall flat and then make a small cut in the other base plate. The garage wall had to be redone. One thing I noticed was all work was checked and was redone if it was not done correctly. Remember how the crossbars were used to make the foundation? Well, the ends had to be knocked out with a hammer. That's now more precise jobs we do. That's kind of like the brute strength. Everybody does it. Overlooking the second house, you can see how much work is done already.
After a couple hours of work, it's time to visit the snack table. Well, now it's back to work. Now, what is that white foam for? That's for insulation, so that you don't get any moisture into the pressure tree. Gives you a little protection against rock. John actually started uh, as a student when he was at Merrimack College and started with Habitat and learned how to frame and everything else. So this may well have been what got him into the job he has now. The garage wall is rebuilt and ready to be placed on the foundation. The windows and doors are cut after the plywood is nailed down. I had to leave now, but the work continued the rest of the day. The next Tuesday and Wednesday, the driveway was graded and the cement floor was put in. You can see how much work was completed by the Saturday framers. And that's uh, compact, which is used to pack the crushed stone down the garage. We still got, have got to lay a floor to the garage. So, so you use that, pack it down, and then they'll put the cement on top of it. It's a way to uh, trowel it smooth. In the past, you'd have a man with a trowel doing it all, and you can see how much the machine speeds it up. You've got to get it at the right time. You've got to get it when it's still ready to do something. The people that know this business, there's a period of time when you go in, when you do different things. So experience is very important in cement. Once it decides to set, you got it, you own it. Now the trail is there, but we have that just arrived, so we now we've got to block it up, get it off the, get the weight off the wheels. Oh, we got to have this. Everybody's got to have a port of Johnny. John Bertolomi and his crew came by on a Friday to get some work done. The next day is Saturday, and the crew is using the trailer to store everything. We'll follow the progress of the man in the green shirt as he gets more proficient with the nail gun. You gotta learn how to use the gun. Sometimes those nail guns, if you hit them too fast, you get a double, double nail. So you've gotta learn how to do it. Houses nowadays have probably three times as many nails as the older houses because it's so easy to put them in. So. You see that double, see that kick? If you'll push it up and keep it in contact, you're good, but if you kind of do a lot of tapping, you may get a, some of the guns, some of the guns have got the problem with it, with the head trigger. Kaz is the owner of this house and is nailing some brackets. Guidelines, that's good. Ask a supervisor. People may have uh, you know, banged a leg or scratched a little bit, but I think general overall the safety was excellent. Today, the second floor is being put in. Dave Berman was leading the way. You know, putting in the interior walls. You want to put that in because of the, of the big expanse that we're coming across. We want to have some, you know, support on the roof, so we want to make sure that those are uh, those uh, interior partitions are in place, so we can nail down to them. So we've got to, we can't wait till for you know to run that whole expanse. That's, he's not resting on the job; they're kind of getting things in place. The old-fashioned kick. Here we go, dropping down the plywood. 
Tell me where you're going to stand. If you, if you don't stand on that, you get standing on a, on a cross beam, and you could well lose your balance. He used the two by four there to give a wider surface for the, for the sledgehammer. If he had just hit the edge of the board, he would probably crumple the, uh, the board, you know, ruin the edges of it. So that was done to protect the, the boards that are going up there. Nail it down and get the next piece ready. While the second floor was being built, the man with the nail gun looks like he's an expert now. The Saturday crew put in the whole second floor. So the Tuesday crew can now work upstairs. Putting metal strappings on the bottom so that when we raise up the walls, uh, if they should slip, they, the whole thing won't fall down. So we're, we're tying things in, locking them in. So we're probably going to pull this up. There's a come along. We get it up, lined up with the line. There's a group putting up the wall on the right. And I think this, there we, we have a peg leg out to the right. And kind of as we put it up, we're raising it. It's in place, so all somebody has to do is come over as we hold the wall straight and they'll nail that in and give us more support on the wall. That wall is actually made in two pieces because the lumber doesn't, you know, carry that whole length of it. It's in two pieces. We had to take the wall back down because the bottom of it was not perfectly lined up on the edge. So basically, we're going to try and move the wall out to the line and then raise it again. We cover that so we wouldn't fall through the hole. It'd be a long drop. After every session, they have a short meeting. How are you going to make coffee? The wall we put up actually had to be taken down again because they wanted to put the gable in. You can see the crying little piece on the top. They wanted, they wanted to put that in at the same time. It's the start of our stairway inside. A set of stairs up to a landing. We haven't got the second set of stairs up to the top done. Bill Bielden's from Bill Ricca. Uh, they're working on framing out the walls in the first floor. Goja is the other owner, putting in her sweat equity. Let's check on the progress upstairs. They're actually putting the, the rafters on the, on the gable end beforehand, so giving it uh, strength. And you can see the two by fours are basically holding the, the gable end to the second floor until we can actually get up there and put a, you know, the beams up there. So. The boy is standing on a sawhorse. That was replaced today with a real set of stairs. That is Habitat President Bill Mersh. The neighbor has fixed his porch. Today, they are not only working on this house. Preliminary work is getting started on the second house baseboards. Actually, we had them all bolted in and 
they said they didn't want them bolted in. Because, see, we're gonna have bolts on them. They wanted them off because it was easier to put on the wall. Delivery of the uh, showers. You've got to get the showers in early because you've got to make sure there's a place to get them through. So we got them through that window. The stairs weren't complete, so we're going to bring them over the stairs, raise them up for the entire opening, and in we go. Another addition today is the stairs in front of the trailer. Here is a look at some of the messages written at board sale fundraisers done by Habitat. The nail guns are powered by these air compressors. Time to wrap it up and store everything in the trailer. The next day, Wednesday, employees from the Archstone Smith Company put up some sidewalls. Ralph Anderson supervised and instructed the crew. On the right, Fred Walkling was the other supervisor. See, we're two and a half inches in. That's where I want to cut. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Where we need to cut. That's where I want to cut. Right. Yeah. Three cameras. Bill Murphy gave this fellow a lesson. One quick cut is the best method. Everyone who worked had to sign a release form. But don't worry, the safety record on this build was excellent. I get some of the better jobs carrying things. And we needed that insulation because we've got to insulate around the tub in the back of the tub first when we get the tub in so we, we're not going to move it again because he's got pipes going down and in so the, pipe, the tub has to be insulation on the exterior walls. A few good kicks will get it in place. He's got a bad back. There's, the, there's a kind of a peg leg to hold it in place so that uh, people don't have to stand there and do it. So they're tapping it in to make sure it's in line. Is Ralph a little uh, more serious come along? Everybody that comes from a company really enjoys being there that day. I think they go home with a feeling they've you know, physically done something. Here is the work done by the end of the day. By Saturday, the volunteers are putting up the roof rafters. You can see there's kind of a walkway that's built across the top of it. So you can get in there and put in all your uh, roof uh, rafters. If the rafters is too correct, but the bird's mouth is off a little bit. 185 and 5 eighths. 5 eighths? Let's do this. Everything is, you know, 
so many feet on center so that later on when you put the plywood over it, if you, you know, draw a line on the plywood, you can come straight down it. You don't have to go searching for, for that uh, two by four. You've got, you know, one and five eighths to hit. So if you, uh, if you line them up right, then yeah. bing, bing, bing. Of course, the plywood is put on a sheet at a time. So it's In the blue shirt is Paul Lamont, one of the board members of Habitat. The second house framing will be started next week. Now, as Tom said, the rafters are off about a quarter inch. So he makes a small cut, and that fits like a glove. With the new measurement, all the cut rafter beams need a quarter inch sliced off them. They are sent upstairs, and now we have perfect fit. Let's listen to the sounds and talk among the group. These two are nailed together real, together real tight. So okay. You're just preventing uplift in case of a hurricane. Okay, but you, you know, you were saying how it's uh, uh, in the, the garage. garage. The problem I have in the garage. Right out, go like this. Up and across. Up and across, like this. Plate to rafter. Okay. And then if you have to bend it around, the plate to something on the outside. For me. Yo. And not to the back of the thing, too. Let's do it less than a quarter. Just tell them a little less than what they're cutting, whatever that may be. Done. He cut it a little bit less than the, whatever it is on the back side, so we're losing an eighth of an inch. top window is six inches to the left of the bottom window. How did this happen? You'll find out in the next episode. Another method to make adjustments is use wedges. After the wedges are put in and nailed down, the ends will be clipped off. Dave is now getting ready to put in the plywood. The clamps are put in the old-fashioned way with a hammer and nail. Andy is getting some clarification on some measurements. It's 32 feet. It's 34 inches. If you're not positive, it's better to ask again. Andy now has everything measured out. Notice that when the plywood's put over the uh, the rafter, it's 
We'll use it only half of the rafter, so the next piece goes in. We need to maintain a nailing surface. If you brought the plywood over to the edge of it, where's the next board going to go? So. Here is how much work was done at the end of the day. We'll finish off this episode by looking at messages written at board sale fundraisers. Part 3 will feature the building of house number 2 for the Dion family. <laughs>